Algebra 2 Rational Functions Theory and Solution We're going to talk about rational functions here. Um, it's a big subject and it's almost impossible to cover everything in a single video. But we try to do a little bit efficient way and you can always go back and look at the video and compare with what you learn in school and from textbook basically you got train yourself doing a lot of exercise but at least I hope you pick up the the key concept from this video that will help you to master the algebra 2 the theory and the solution the rational function as I said it's a big subject and the we're going to go really fast to cover all the key concept so it's gonna be bumpy ride fasten your sheet belt okay what is a rational function rational function is basically based on the polynomial function you have a polynomial function px and the qx and the ratio is rational function for example if polynomial function is simple one and another polynomial function is simple x 1 over x this is considered as a rational function or 1 x minus 2 now in the section of the shifted functions you learned how to shift the function the we can consider this x minus 2 the shifting 2 from this function and as you see this function graphically x y x cannot be zero this function is not defined at x equals zero okay so when x goes really small number inverse of this uh, value x is going to be extremely large but as soon as you pass this singularity point then value become negative so it's come down uh, come back from the negative infinities all the way to very small negative value okay so graph looks like this for this function and this gradually getting close to some uh, straight line is a symptom okay and sometimes it's not just a, a straight line uh, later when you learn the differential equation you learn some function which is a, a symptom to the curved line okay and this kind of function cannot be expressed by uh, rational function and even you bring up the uh, all the new function you learn in algebra 2 this will not be expressed you need the new definition of function which is not provided by mathematician so we just have to live with uh, graphical solution for the differential equation but that's just a sideline okay so you have to know the basic of asymptote singularity and characteristic of uh, rational function and when you uh, shift by two right to here then this function look like this and if you remember the definition of function in the video we went through what is a function function is the relationship of two variables right in this case two variable function y equals f of x what is f and x these are variable what is variable variable is unknown value and that means whatever the pair of value that satisfy this function equation is going to be on this line okay 
So that's what it means. And the singularity shifted here because of shifted function. Rational function, it's get more complicated. What if 1 over x square, right? OK, so x square is the function like this, right? And the inverse is, of course, it's getting close to 0, so it's going to go infinity around the 0. So there is a singular point at that 0. But no matter what the value of x is, the value is always positive. So this line stay on the positive side. OK? So that looks like a, a nuclear tower. It's just the height is infinity. OK? So now we deal with um, x over x minus 4. So here, polyno polynomial fraction, uh, factoring become very important. What happened is x plus 2 and x minus 2. If you factor, you can tell where the singularity is. Singularity is here when this becomes 0, right? Or here, this becomes 0. So there are two singularity points, which is 2 and negative 2. OK? So this is x. And the x is sitting on top, right? And divide by this. So if you kind of uh, indicate each point of this divide, it's become like this and that. OK? It's a pretty complicated shape. You have a two singularity, two singularity, and around the singularity, of course, the the y goes to infinity. But depend on which side, it goes infinity, positive or negative. Okay, so that's. Another example of rational function. Find the roots and the singularity of the rational function below and draw the graph. OK. Now, roots. The root of rational function means this is 0, right? And that means x to the second. Uh, minus 4x plus 4, you find this root three roots, right? And what do you have to do? Exclude singularity. And what do you mean when the the root value and the singularity value collide. That means you have, say R1 is a singularity and, and roots at the same time. There must be x minus R1 on both sides, and you can eliminate it. OK? That means if. We have to check after we obtain the root if this root is happen to be singularity, then this is not going to be root and not going to be a sing uh, singularity as we can eliminate from both sides. Okay, numerator and don uh, denominator has a two same term. And so let's give a uh, gamble, right? The This going to be x plus 4 and x minus 4. 
check C if 4 is going to make this 0. 4 cube minus 4 second minus 4 plus 4. And obviously, it's not because this is already too large, right? So, have a simple case 1, 1 minus 1 minus 4 plus 4. Ha! Ah. So, 1 makes it. So, this must have x minus 1 in it. So, what do you do? You divide, right? x third, x second, 4x, and x minus 1. So, x second, x third minus x second. It's gone. So, the minus 4. Minus 4x plus 4, 0. So, this is going to be x plus 2 and x minus 2. So, we got 3 root. Okay? And none of them the same as singularity. So, we have a 3 root and 2 singularity in this rational function. Got that? Let's look at C how graphically that's a case. Now it's easier to draw the graph once you know the uh, the roots, right? It's 1 and negative 1, was it? Let's see. Uh, 2. So actually here 1 and negative 2, right? And the positive 2. Where's the positive 2? Okay, so this line must be going up the x coordinate and coming down again. So you have three roots between two singularity. Here's a singularity and here's another singularity. Okay, I'm going too fast. You can stop the video anytime and go over slowly and make sure you completely understand. You should be able to draw this line, uh, the, the curve in the x, y coordinate from this equation. Okay, so rational function root theory. The, when a polynomial with integer coefficient has a rational root. Okay. Then the root must be h over l where h is a factor of a0 and l is a factor of a n. Hmm. Very interesting. Example, when this find the rational root if it exists. Okay factor of 3 is 3 and 1 and the factor of 1 is 1 and we include extended definition of factors that means negative okay so factor is going to be plus minus the possible real root is plus minus 1 or plus minus 3 verify each possible roots and obtain negative 1 it exists so if it's negative 1, yeah, 0, right? So negative 1 is a root. So what this theory is saying, the where h is a factor of a0 and l is a factor of a n, the root must be h over l. Okay, and h is a factor of a n, l is a factor of a n. Okay, can you memorize this one? It's very specialized case and it's, it's helps sometimes but not always. But you know, if you like, this is a polynomial. 
this rather than polynomial function root theory okay it helps sometimes how the proof well it's quite complicated and we have to let the mathematicians telling us this is correct okay and this is kind of you don't want to spend unless you're a mathematician you don't want to spend too much time on proof of this okay find the root of this and type the answer below okay can you do that let's try it right let's see h is a factor of a n this one so plus minus three and l is factor of a n plus minus one uh, one of them possibility is three or negative three right let's put the three so it's gonna be nine uh, no 27 minus uh, 18 minus 12 plus 3 hmm look like make it so 3 right have a negative 3 and this is the way you find the roots okay what kind of roots exist for a polynomial function beside uh, rational roots? What kind of roots exist for a polynomial function beside the rational roots? Well, the question, the meaning of question is not really clear here, but the uh, what it means is polynomial has more roots than rational because rational if once the roots exist in denominator then that's the single point and cancelled out okay how many roots exist for a polynomial equation okay so we know this already a0 xn plus whatever the degree of polynomial n right when you find the roots using a theory above you find the roots how can you find other roots okay so what you do is you extract one root and keep other polynomial and apply the theory for this polynomial again then find the second root and we repeat this process this will become eventually the single term right and that's a way we find all the roots does the theorem above guarantee that we can find all roots using the method described well maybe maybe not there is a well you have to practice you why don't you try the theory and try to find the roots of polynomial and see what's happened okay uh, actually answer is here irrational roots and the imaginary roots okay the n is answer here and expanding each one one by one that's the way you get the roots no it does not guarantee the theorem find the roots only if there is rational roots okay uh, here's a key rational roots is if r i is rational 
if ri is complex number or irrational then it doesn't work okay that's why I said it helps but not always okay Uh, rational function proper form what is a proper form proper form is say px has x n qx highest order is x m okay if n is larger than m it's not rational in that case you execute division then you have a proper form of rational function plus polynomial following it okay so in this case this x to the third this x to the second then you do division and numerator is what the divisions remainder and you have a division executed this is polynomial so any rational function can be the proper form of rational function plus polynomial okay this is uh, division in this example what happened to fx when x goes extremely large fx becomes very large because of polynomial okay because x become very large here proper form when x is very large always goes to zero because the denomina denominator has a larger uh, uh, order of terms right so the fx becomes close to zero what happened to fx when x in this example in this example the fx become very large because of this polynomial term okay select the correct answer that's i selected for you already so real function uh uh now we have rational function plus irrational function it's this comma right you learned integer rational number irrational number complex number well in the function you learn exactly the same way the polynomial is kind of integer then you learn rational number now you have a rational function and all together called real function and that's where the uh, real challenge exists for engineers and physicists and mathematicians okay how do you find we talk about this for midpoint method right the roots how you find the roots you take this positive and negative side very prog uh, proximity of the root here's the root and you take a middle point and check see middle point is zero if negative then replace middle point uh, negative value to the middle point repeat again if middle point is positive replace the positive value with middle point and try it again so using computer calculation you repeat thousand times you get very accurate root okay because real function includes square root and stuff I mean what kind of uh, irrational function irrational 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 function is like this is the rational function right it's not even polynomial rational function is at least polynomial ratio plus some polynomial 
right? But irrational function is like that. So there's no way you can solve it. Congratulations, uh, you are in the territory of math where you cannot find a solution. At least computer give you very accurate solutions by calculating, repeating the calculation thousand times. Okay, so graphing rational function. Graphing rational function, what you do is you convert into proper form first. And you draw polynomial x minus 1 in this case. Okay? And proper form of rational function. And the rational function, what you know is the roots and the single point are different for proper form. It's already cancelled out. So you don't have to worry about if the roots and the single point are the same or not. So by setting a 0 to numerator, you can find the um, crossing point, x-intercept. right? And by setting 0 to the denominator, you can find the single point. So once you find a single point, in this case 4, negative 4, and this is 1 here, is a root. Okay? The remaining is, you know, when x goes large, it goes to large positive. If x goes large negative, the value goes large negative. This guy dictate at the extreme largeness. Okay? So, combining all the knowledge about this, you should be able to draw the function. Okay. Now, how do you draw this one? You draw this, you draw this, and take a division on each point, kind of plot it out. Okay? That's what you have to do. Find the roots, singularity, and asymptote lines of the rational function below and draw the graph. Okay, so the this change to proper form here and here, right? Okay, so there's no um, there is only one single uh, point, negative 2, right? And other than that, it's pretty straightforward. So the graph like this, very peculiar graph, right? Irrational function, here comes irrational. He's so irrational, you cannot win arguing with irrational function, okay? You just have to accept it. When n is not integer, it is not a polynomial. The irrational function is n not integer. This is the monster, okay? So, what do you do? Like 1 over 2, n is this one is n is 1 over 2, right? Or this guy. Look at this ugly. x to the 5 over 2 and x to the 1 over 2. Those are irrational functions. Well, but don't, don't be afraid of irrational number because you are dealing with irrational number all the time because you look at the polynomial. Any polynomial function, if you create inverse function, this is irrational function. So if you look at the xy coordinate, sideway 
you know, just tilt your head. It's irrational function. So this is polynomial. This is an irrational function. You get it? So inverse function is irrational function. You look at, you know, sideway. That's irrational function. Okay, so let's try some irrational function. This is irrational function. Square root of x minus four. X minus four. Uh, x plus four. Sound like uh, it's a shifted function, right? The negative four is shifted. And you look at the side way. You tilt your head and look at the side way, as if this is y and this is x. And that's how it look like. Okay. <laughs> so that's the irrational function. Simple. Draw an irrational function in a graph. Well, now this is going to be uglier, right? But I hope you can figure out. Take time and practice this. Uh, you can stop the video and confirm on your uh, paper and the pencil. Make sure you understand why it looks like this. Okay? Ah, that's the end. I wanted to show more, you know, the uglier functions, but well, after all, it's algebra too, so don't scare student too much. Okay? So I hope you enjoy listening this video, and I hope we'll meet you in the next video. Thank you for listening.